Tonight, I once again have the privilege of presenting the Kentucky Missionary of the Year Award. Each year, this award is given to the missionary or missionary couple that demonstrates commitment to and effectiveness in evangelism, church planting, or ministry, demonstration of going the second mile, outstanding performance in achieving assigned task, tenure, unusual commitment to the Lord's service, positive representation of the Kentucky Baptist Convention and the North American Mission Board, and true reflection of being an on-mission Christian. The 2015 recipient meets all of these requirements and more. 32 years ago, after serving in Hawaii, Iowa, and Louisville, Greg and Alice Whitetree came to the lookout community of Pike County, Kentucky to serve as directors of the Frida Harris Baptist Center. They planted themselves deeply in the community and today call that place home. Greg and Alice not only minister to children, but to the entire family through the various ministries of the center. It is estimated from their monthly reports that over 1,200 professions of faith have been made as a direct result of their ministry. In 2011, the White Trees retired, but they agreed to remain on as volunteer directors so that the ministry would continue in the place that they love and serve. I wish you could hear all of their story, but time will just not permit tonight. The following video will give just a short snapshot of their ministry, for we can never capture the full extent of this ministry. Please watch. Kentucky has long been known as coal country, but tucked into the mountains in Pike County is one of the real gems of Kentucky Baptist ministry, the Frida Harris Baptist Center. The center gets its name from one of the true legends of Kentucky Baptist work, a hairstylist turned missionary to impoverished mountain children. Frida was a devout Christian, loved people, loved children, and loved God. Well, Frida was one that, that literally gave her life for this area. You could go any place and mention her name and people know her. I've seen so many miracles that I probably couldn't even describe them all. Uh, we had so many uh, people that she would stop and ask them to come to church, always stop. And uh, they would have, you know, excuses. Uh, I don't have a dress to wear. Or they'd say, I don't have any shoes. And one day I was up front with her and she opened the door, she got out. She said, what size shoes do you wear? And uh, I don't know, I think she said nine. And Frida pulled her shoes off, said it's exactly what these are. They's a pair of black flat shoes with a sharp toe. And she pulled her shoes off and she went to church barefooted. What Frida began continues today through the ministry of Kentucky Baptist Convention and North American Mission Board missionaries, Greg and Alice Whitetree. They have served at the center since 1983. When we first reopened the center, we wanted to be true to the, to the original ideas and uh, ministries, and one of those was reaching out to children. Well, Alice and I were children specialists with the, the old home mission board, and, and so we, uh, we, we started up where Frida led off. We reach out to the children. Uh, we do a summer long vacation Bible school, and uh, we have different groups coming from all over the country, all over Kentucky, all over the South. We even had folks come from as far away as Boston and Indiana and other places. The kids love it. We just, uh, uh, they, they like coming to these clubs and, and to these vacation Bible schools and, and learning about Jesus. But we do the, basically the same thing that Frida did, and uh, tell them that Jesus loves them and have them down at the gym. The Appalachian region faces many challenges with high unemployment, poverty, hunger, and drug abuse, leading many to feel hopeless. We watch the children who are so deep into drugs that their skin and bones, the bones in their faces are just, you can see the face, facial bones. They lose all of their teeth. They're losing hair. And, but that's all. The Frida Harris Center is the only place they have. There is nothing else. The work of the Frida Harris Baptist Center is made possible primarily by generous gifts to the cooperative program. Support is also received through the Eliza Broadus offering for state missions and the Annie Armstrong Easter offering. The work also relies on the hands-on contributions of local volunteers and mission groups. 
it's a great opportunity. Um, there's a lot of activity here at the center, and there's also a lot of activity within the community to, to if you can just connect your students. And I've enjoyed this opportunity because my students get to interact with children. They get to interact with middle-aged adults. They get to interact with older adults. So it's just a great opportunity for us to come in and to, for us to help them grow spiritually. But as we leave here, each of us know how much we grow spiritually. If they're interested in doing missions, then come. If you're interested in satisfying yourself, then don't come. We offer you a nice hard floor in a gymnasium with the kitchen, bathrooms, and showers. We offer you children who I love. They love you to death. But if you're interested in missions, come. Meeting needs and sharing Christ has always been the mission of the Frida Harris Baptist Center. Add the center to your prayer list today. They're always welcome, and Frida Harris is always a, is always a place they can come. Greg and Alice, I'm pleased to present to you the 2015 Missionary of the Year Award. Congratulations, and they have a few words they'd like to share with you. Yes. You want to speak first? I guess. I guess. <laughs> Alice told me we just had a few minutes to speak, and she said, you better keep it short. Being a pastor, as well as a missionary, I puffed up with all my pastoral pride, and I looked at her and I said, Yes, dear. <laughs> we came here to the mountains of eastern Kentucky, and Frida Harris spoke to us, and she said this to me. She, she quoted Deuteronomy chapter 11, and she, read, she said this. She said, for the land which you go to possess it, is not as the land of Egypt from when she came out, where thou sowedest thy seed and waterest it with thy foot as a garden of herbs. But the land, whither thou goest in to possess it, is a land of hills and valleys that drinketh the water of the rain of heaven, a, a land which the Lord thy God careth for. The eyes of the Lord thy God are always upon it from the beginning of the year even unto the end of the year. And at that point, I had an Isaiah vision. The room didn't fill with smoke, and I didn't see things flying around or anything like that. But it's as if God had his hand on Frida's shoulder. And he's looking directly at me, and he was saying, listen, you can forget about your past. I want you here in my present, going with me into my future. And so we stayed, and we put our roots down. And as you commission these missionaries later tonight, I want you to know that that is what God wants you to do. Go where he wants you to go. Do what he wants you to do. And put your roots down and love the people. Alice has something she'd like to tell you, though. Greg and I have been married nearly 48 years. Wow. And 40, 45 of those years have been with the uh, North American Mission Board, Home Mission Board, as they change their name all the, you know, every back and forth, but uh, we have been in missions and we have loved it and that's our life. Our children, we have a daughter who has two children, we have a son that is newly married and he has a beautiful wife and uh, he has a daughter. And, and this is our home. But uh, I got to tell you, sometimes we get discouraged because we think we work and we work and we work. And we've worked there 32 years. And just the other week, we have gotten two new volunteers in. 
and one of these is Julie. She's a retired nurse. Her husband died, she retired. One of the neighbors and a deacon at our church said, get yourself down to Frida Harris and volunteer. And she did and she is. We have left them today, she and another lady in charge of 14 people doing missions at the center so we could come here and leave in the morning and go back. But we can leave them with these two trustworthy volunteers. And uh, he told her to, to come. Well, she had been there with us for two or three, four years now. And I have been working with this lady 32 years, witnessing to her, talking to her. Aren't you ready to give your life to the Lord? No. Her family is eaten up with drugs. Every child that she has, grandchildren, are all dying from drugs. And she said, no. Will you come to church with me? No. Will you please think about it? Maybe. 32 years now. And I've loved Debbie. I love her like a sister. And she came in two or three weeks ago, and Julie was up upstairs and she said, Alice, God told me, come downstairs. You have a job. She came down, she's a nurse. Debbie is really bad with cancer. She's having chemo and she's gone back to the doctor now. She will have a radical mastectomy, mastectomy. Uh, yeah, whatever. But she's, she's at the point now where she knew she was going to possibly die, and she knew she would go to hell. She knew it. Julie says, Debbie, aren't you ready to uh, give your life to the Lord and, and give, uh, know where you're going to go if and when you die? And she said, yes. 32 years I have witnessed, and now she... Wherever the missionaries are that are going to be commissioned, don't give up. 32 years now, and you think she's never going to go. But now she said, I know now that when I die, if I die, I will uh, be going to heaven. So 32 years, it was worth it all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for the award. We appreciate it.